Do you dare open that blister? That model is older than you are. You only have the one, there's no second try. Do you think you can build it and paint it without screwing it up? No voices of doubt. I can do it or I'll die trying. Some of you may recognize this model. I teased it at the end of three decades of bikes and it is a Rogue Trader Chaplin on jet bike. I've been contemplating what I wanna do with this mini. I could paint it up for display and that'd be fine, but I really would like to get it into games of 40K. Painting for gaming is a big motivator for me and I would like to bring into this age of Primaris a little bit of Rogue Trader charm. So let's pop this sucker open and see what it looks like. I'm gonna be cutting this guy out of the packaging as carefully as I can because I actually collect these card backs. So the trick is, folks, always cut towards yourself. No, that's not true. But the trick is to always use a very, very sharp, fresh X-Acto knife. And it won't take much to get this guy out of the packaging. As you can see, the old, old plastic is starting to, starting to crumble a little. There it goes. Yeah! Oh boy. And I thought this would be a backpack with a banner. But it's actually just a bent pole? I have never seen that before. But yeah! Oh, look at that card art! I have, I have a whole little collection here, as you can see. I'm very excited to add this Rogue Trader card back to my collection. I don't know why I keep these, but uh, I like them. I think they're fun. But getting to the good stuff, I have now three Rogue Trader backpacks, which is very good because I have a bunch of Rogue Trader minis and they're all missing their backpacks. So let's have a look at this old, old fella. Boy, <laughs> he, he leaves a little bit to be desired. So let me take a look at this jet bike. Wow. <laughs> This thing is special. <laughs> Holy moly. This is old school. It's got little fuel, a little fuel pod on the side. It's got things that are meant to resemble bolters. It has maybe another gun in the very tippy front. These flight stands are the worst things Games Workshop has ever done, ever. Uh, they always, always, always snap. It has a nice big bubble in it to help uh, break the immersion. Wow, there's just there's just the, the the barest hint of a dent in there to to give you a target to put the jet bike on. Ah, you know what though? I guess I can't badmouth too much. It fits together all in one go. Yep. Can't wait to figure out something to do with that. But got my backpacks, got my Rogue Trader. It looks, I was thinking about some kit bashing I could do to this. And I don't know if they're gonna be kit bashes so much as just kind of fixing what's there. The handlebars leave a lot to be desired. The engines leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> the guy leaves a lot to be desired. But you know what, I think, I think he is gonna give some classic nostalgia vibes. I think he's gonna be very fun to work on. I've been trying to find the perfect Primaris counterpart for this model to represent, and I think I have found it in the Primaris Chapter Ancients. Uh, I think the idea of it being the oldest and the oldest Marine in the chapter wielding the precious banner is gonna be a perfect thing to be represented by literally one of the oldest possible models and they should probably be about the same size footprint on the tabletop. So the next thing to do is going to be to figure out exactly how I am going to turn this into this. I decided to sketch a rough picture of what I wanted the model to look like. Even though this won't be the craziest kit bash, it's nice to have a plan. Drawing a picture is kind of like getting to build the model once before having to commit to actually building the model. I can make mistakes that I would have made for real in 2D first. 
I drew a picture of the model, but really what I wanted to see was how the banner would interact with the model, and I had to decide if I wanted a horizontal banner or a vertical banner flapping in the breeze. It's not important if the sketch is a work of art, as long as it lets you get what's in your head down on paper in front of you, it's worth it. This sketch solidified the idea of a horizontal banner and him holding it down with his arm. So, the next thing to do, or the first thing to do with these metal models is to give them a bath in some alcohol. It's times like this I'm reminded that plastic minis are better than uh, metal and resin in just about every single way. So to build a metal model, I'm gonna need some nippers to cut away all the little tags and some metal files, and I'm always a big fan of the nail file. You know, often when I'm building some of these older models, I get a twinge, a twinge of something, not quite regret, but that if a feeling of uh, that I don't have the clout to be uh, talking about models like these, because I wasn't, I wasn't really doing this sort of stuff when these models came out. Heck, I wasn't even born when this model came out probably. Was there a date? 1986, yep, before before my time. But uh, I don't think you have to have been at the ribbon cutting ceremony in Nottingham in uh, 1987 to get to have a say in what's cool or not. So I am just going to build up this Rogue Trader Chaplain and you know what? It's gonna be the best one out there. So I've got this guy just about cleaned up and the only thing left is a couple of the rivets did not cast. So I'm gonna be fixing them up with some microbeads. I love microbeads. You can find them at most arts and craft stores. They are tiny glass beads. I find a wax pencil is a nice tool to have to pick them up with. I poured a drop of super glue into the hole where the rivet should have been. And then I looked around to find the perfectly sized bead. I carefully dipped it into the glue and then let it dry. The wax is nice because the super glue does not stick to it. All right, with the chaplain cleaned, I'm gonna prepare myself a little bit of green stuff right now because I'm gonna be using it later and I like it to have set up a little bit before I start to work with it. Squish the two halves together and then when it turns green, you know it is ready to work with. With the bike just about ready to be assembled, it's time for some five minute epoxy. Oh, it's a little stuck. There we go. I love this stuff when putting together metal models, although it is not the perfect thing. You want, you want an epoxy with a long cure time for the strength, but five minutes is still pretty darn strong, so it should get the job done. I squirted the two halves of the epoxy into my favorite container, water bottle caps, and gave it a stir. I spread it onto the model like I spread jelly on my toast and pressed the two parts together. One of the great things about five minute epoxy is it has kind of a built in surface area since it's so thick. Because uh, with glue, the, the best point of contact, ah, the best point of contact is going to be where the glue touches the model. And since there's so much more surface area with epoxy, it, you're gonna get a stronger bond. Boy, oh boy. Is it on straight? It's hard to tell if this model is straight or not because uh, the, it's so kind of crushed and squished in the casting. With the bike glued together, the next thing is gonna be figuring out how I'm going to turn his Crozius into a banner. But there's one thing I have to do first. I have to YOLO cut off the old, impressive, perfect, perfectly sculpted topper. Boop. All right, that was step one. I think I'll probably use the brass rod as a base and then decorate it with the aluminum pipe. I started by making some dents in the metal to give my hobby drill something to catch onto and I began drilling a hole straight through the crozius. I drilled a little on the top and bottom hoping the holes would meet in the middle. All right, I should be through any second. Any second now, I should be able to see some daylight through the holes I'm drilling. Yeah! Woo! Perfect hole drilled through the crozius. While I had my hobby drill out, I also drilled holes in the engine and the tiny misshapen bolters on the front of the bike. I found some plastic card that was about the right size for the handlebars, so I cut off small sections and super glued them onto the handlebars to make them longer. His arms barely reached before. 
All right, it's finally time to put asses in seats. I'm gonna take a little bit of green stuff, make a small ball, put it on his butt, and squish him down into his chair. As much as you might wanna skip it, I would hold off and let the green stuff dry so that you don't knock the ass out of the seat. To know how tall I needed to make the flagpole, I lined it up with my real Primaris Ancient to use that as a rough guide. Then I chopped it to size. Boy, oh boy, do I never ever want to work with metal models ever again. Yay, I'm through! Go in. It wants to. Ah, I have shredded that aluminum bar. Alright, it's time to slow down. Done this once or twice before, and it always sucks. Come on, yeah! Well, somehow, I've actually managed to build this banner pole, and I think the way I'm gonna wanna pull off this banner is to make the whole cloth part out of green stuff. To build this banner, I took my green stuff and some parchment paper and rolled it flat. It's always an adventure with green stuff, but one day I would like to be a great sculptor, and it all starts with this banner. I like to work with green stuff that is about an hour old because it's much more solid and doesn't want to fall apart as easily. I cut it into shape with a wet hobby knife and I kept my banner close by to get the size right. I carved out my banner tassels that'll keep it attached to the horizontal arm of the banner, two per side. I like working on parchment paper as the green stuff does not stick to it. I pulled the green stuff banner off of the parchment paper and draped it over the banner pole. Where it met the hand, I had to strategically remove material, as the banner in reality is only as thick as cloth, so I squished it flat and carved off the excess green stuff. Then I used a silicone brush to push the fold down into the metal hand of the chaplain. Then I made the bottom of the banner that is sticking out from underneath the arm, so I cut a vaguely square shape and glued it into place with superglue, then sculpted it to be the last few feet of the flag flapping in the wind. Whew, holy cow, all right, that green stuff was a doozy, but I'm actually pretty shocked at how nicely it turned out. I'm no master with green stuff, but I was able to get, I was able to get something that looked pretty decent. There is only one thing left to do to finish this flagpole. All right, I need to find the perfect topper for my banner. So it's time to turn to the old bits bin. I don't really have a lot of stuff from the old Rogue Trader days which really that would probably be the best because a lot of these bits look too good. You know, I think the perfect bit has been staring me in the face the whole time. The croziest topper from the kit, a match made in heaven. I sanded the top of the banner smooth and used a nail file to sand it flat to give more surface area for the top to stick to. One drop of super glue and my banner was no longer topless. Well, the next thing to do is the base. But you know what you never have to base? That's right, the Eons of Battle Patreon. If you enjoy our videos, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, extra live streams every week, and more. With that out of the way, let's base a chaplain. First, I broke out the soil cover, which is pieces of bark that make great scale rocks and mountains. I picked through until I found the perfect piece. I took my piece and sanded it smooth on one side that'll be glued down to the base with some 60 grit sandpaper. I glued it down with lots and lots of super glue. Wood is porous and is not the best for super glue, but it'll still get the job done. The jet bike will fit perfectly on top. I used the old kitty litter and super glue trick to finish filling up the rest of the base. I used just a little putty to smooth over the bumpiest places. Then it was time to attach my flying stand. I didn't need nearly so much, so I made a mark and I clipped away the excess. All right. Always a good day when I get to break out the power drill, and this is certainly not overkill for drilling a small hole in my base for the flying stand. I drilled my hole as carefully as I could, then I filled it with some five minute epoxy. The epoxy is a great choice here because it's clear also and will not frost over the acrylic stand. White glue would have worked here too, but who has time to let that dry? I put the model into place to make sure that I had the correct angle of the dangle, then let it dry. After that, I covered the base with wood glue and gave it a sprinkling of pebbles, medium grain sand, and then finally, some fine grain sand. Now the model was finished and ready for painting. I threw it in the Games Workshop painting handle and got it ready for priming. I was really happy with how things had turned out. I primed the model black with my airbrush, but you could just as easily do it with a rattle can. 
I used my airbrush to get my highlights started. I used an airbrush with a fine needle to add some highlights of gray in some areas and then a really subtle highlight of light gray. I watered down some black paint and mixed in a little bit of matte medium so that the paint still had enough body to go on smoothly, but was thin enough to glaze and flow over the recesses. Once that was dry, I went in with a longer, sharper paintbrush to add in some more black into the recessed areas. I also painted all the areas to be metal black, and although not quite as essential for black Templars, it's a good idea in general so that there's a nice black outline on all the metal components. Lead Belcher is a wonder paint. I cannot say the same for many other Games Workshop colors, but Lead Belcher goes on smooth and perfectly in one coat every time. I went back in with some black paint to further darken some of the armor. Black armor is super tricky, because if it's too black, it doesn't look like anything. But if it's too highlighted, it looks like gray armor. I don't know if I've achieved the perfect balance, but I like my color scheme overall, even if it is a bit more gray than black. The big sexy part of this paint job is the checkerboard. I followed along with my own tutorial, which you can watch here, but I painted thin vertical lines and then went in from the sides to paint thin horizontal lines. I wanted something really poppy because these Rogue Trader models always have zany weird paint jobs and I want mine to match. I filled in my checkers with more red paint and then I used some bright red and orange to carefully outline each checker to make them look more striking. My Templar could play checkers on this bike. And adding some freehanding like this is a great way to add detail and interest to a model that is rather flat and boring. Some might even say, ugly. Obviously this was when 40k was really grim dark, unlike today with Primaris Marines. Red can be a tricky color to work with because you can't just add white, that would turn it pink. But just a little bit of orange can help make things nice and vibrant without losing that red look. Now it was time for the shoulders, and boy oh boy, these shoulders. I've seen better cast skulls on Halloween candy. These are dreadful. I don't know exactly why they are so horrible, but I'm gonna do my best. I base coated them with some Beastie Brown, which will end up being my mid-tone. I watered down some Vallejo Chocolate Brown to add some darkness to my skull, and then after that, I began highlighting with some Vallejo Bone White, the perfect color for bones. I layered this on all the large areas, leaving a bit of Beastie Brown and Chocolate Brown showing in the recesses. This was not the first time I painted these shoulders, and hopefully, it will be the last. I was amazed, these skulls are not even particularly round or shoulder pad shaped. If I had to guess which spot on the model got the least attention, I would say it was these shoulders. After about 50 coats, I had built my way up to pure bone white, leaving my previous colors in the recess. These shoulders are now practically recognizable as skulls. Nice. Home stretch, now I highlighted the face with some pure white. I didn't want to do bone and have it look the same as the shoulders, so pure white will do nicely on this chaplain's death mask. And I dotted the eyes with some red. Next came probably the most difficult part of this whole project, painting the tiny chapter symbol on the shoulder dots. This was an exercise in patience. It was slow going, back and forth putting on a brushstroke of red, and then going in with some black and fixing the brushstroke of red. The Templar symbol is probably one of the easier chapter symbols, but painting anything recognizable on this scale is challenging. Work slow, keep your paint very thin, and be ready to make tons of mistakes. Alright, now for the moment I have been dreading, freehanding a Templar symbol on a folded flag. This was a YOLO moment, I couldn't put it off any longer, it was time to put paintbrush to banner, I did my best. I started with some light grey as it had better coverage than white, and thought that the top part of the cross would be mostly normal looking and a good place to start. I put it right in the center and used that to show me where the two sides of the cross should go. I used the fact that a lot of the flag is hidden under the arm to help me and I made the perpendicular arms of the cross arch down into the wrinkled areas. I didn't know if it was correct, but it looks good enough. Definitely a first and maybe a last for painting symbols on a folded flag. With the banner done, it was time for the base. I gave it a coat of Vallejo Earth and then a dry brushing of Vallejo Bone White, as I do to all my Black Templar models. And then the painting was finished. So I have finished the paint job and I'm thinking it looks pretty slick, but there's been something I've been wanting to try out for a while, using some polyester stuffing to make some uh, dust being kicked up by the anti-gravity device. So I'm thinking the best adhesive of choice is gonna be uh, all America, America's favorite tacky glue. I wanted to do this to my orcs but I kind of chickened out or it didn't quite give the look I really, really wanted. But I'm thinking here it should be perfect because it's not being kicked up by wheels. It's being kicked up by, by uh, like that gravity or the thrusters or whatever magical technology it is. Probably get it into some sort of a cone shape. 
and then stick it through a little hole. Oh, that's huge. I might need to thin it out a little. And there's something kind of fun with that. I found the stuffing decently sculptable. I tore off chunks and then rolled the stuffing in between my fingers to get it nice and round again. This is looking pretty cool. A couple of little, little, little strands. Just cut those off with my skizzies. It kind of looks cool. And then I'm thinking I can airbrush it just a little with some Vallejo Earth, which is the color I use for the base. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty happy with how my dust is looking, but there's one more thing I want to try, which is some kitty litter acting as rocks being thrown out of the way. Kitty litter in specific because it's much lighter than real pebbles. And so I'm hoping if I'm pretty gentle, I can airbrush them brown. Mm, maybe not. Uh, maybe. Maybe move the nicely painted model a little bit away from me. All right, well, I'm sure there are cleverer ways to do that, but I'm impatient and I got a couple of good rocks out of it. So I'm hoping I can just tacky glue these right on to the stuffing and they'll stick like a charm and it'll add a nice bit of realism. I'm not giving up yet. I think I'm gonna put on a few more. I could always pull them off. I think the smaller rocks might be the winners. The big rocks look like they probably wouldn't be kicked up by the uh, exhaust of the jets. Hmm. I think I am gonna keep them. And I'll just, I'll see how I feel when I look back on this model. The, it is, they are sticking on nicely, and they're definitely not weighing down the stuffing, which is nice. Well, now that I have my plume of smoke, the next thing is to paint the rim of the base black. And just a couple of quick coats, maybe two thin coats. And then last things last, a little bit of matte varnish. I'm hoping this will also help keep the uh, stuffing in place. I like to get one nice wet coat of matte varnish to all my minis. All right, the model is finished and I've actually managed to hold off on gluing together my sub assemblies until the model's finished, which is what you should always do. Although very often I get impatient or overly excited and I glue it together during the painting process. But I'm gonna glue his backpack on now with just a drop of super glue. And now the model is finished. I am super pleased with how this model turned out. I think I did Rogue Trader justice. He will make a fine addition to my Primaris collection. The rules for the chapter Ancient seem pretty cool too. I love a guy with a banner and it's fun that they have rules in game. The banner gives plus one to leadership, which who cares, Space Marines were not going to be failing leadership, but it also grants a last chance fight or shooting with a model that dies within six inches of the banner. Which does suck a little, because things have to die for the rule to go off, but it does give you some insurance that whatever you're trying to accomplish, you will get the chance to do it. And there is even a relic called Penitent of the Fallen, which lets you attack twice. With that relic, now you are actually hoping for your guys to die. Whenever I manage to get a model finished, I like to put it alongside some other models from my army. I like to see how they look together, and it's just fun to play with my army men. I think this Rogue Trader Chaplain really is going to be a jack of all trades. On its fancy 40mm base, I can run it as a Primaris Chaplain or a Primaris Chapter Ancient. And if I sticky tack it down to a bigger base, I could run it as a Space Marine on bike or a Space Marine Outrider. Even though the model is ancient, I'll be able to run it in many, many games of 40k to come. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's always fun to get to work on some Rogue Trader era miniatures. It's really interesting to look back and to see just how far Games Workshop kits have come over the years.